the meta in D2 might look very, very different beginning tomorrow. If you didn't know, Bungie put out a TWAB last week highlighting a lot of changes that will be going live tomorrow at the weekly reset. I think most PvP players who read over the numbers in that TWAB will have a pretty good idea of what to put on tomorrow, but there may be one option that really flew under the radar mathematically. Today, we're going to go over three guns that you should either try out tomorrow in PvP or be ready to deal with. Let's go ahead and start under the SMG umbrella. From the TWAB, Bungie feels that some SMGs are being used well outside of their intended ranges and they're being reeled in. There is absolutely no secret that they are talking about Shire's Wrath, a gun that has been outshining other SMGs for quite some time now. They also did specifically call out Friction Fire, but I can probably count the number of times I've actually used that weapon in PvP on my dick. Shira's base damage is going up though, from 16 to 17 damage on a body shot, and crit damage going from 22.4 to 23.8. That's the good news. Here's the bad. Shira's beloved zoom factor is being brought down to 15, and we're losing 1 meter of damage falloff and across the board. Translation, your and my busted ass Shira's won't be as lethal from downtown anymore. As I mentioned though, base damage is going up for Shira and other precision frame SMGs. I'ma show you some quick numbers, don't freak out baby. It's just math. Going by Bungie's numbers in the TWAB alone, if old Shira fired off 9 shots and 2 hit the body while 7 hit the head, you would be doing a grand total of around 188.8 damage, which ain't killing a ton of people in PvP with the current high resil meta. Don't have an updated clip yet because the update drops tomorrow, but new Shira fires off those same 9 shots and deals instead a whopping 200.6 damage, which should be enough on paper to kill literally anyone in PvP. Hell, even with 6 shots to the head and 3 to the body on new Shira, you would be dishing out 193.8 damage. Not quite enough to kill anyone, but definitely enough to kill plenty of guardians in PvP. However you slice it, Shira's range is getting cut, yeah, but the lethality is going up at mid-range come tomorrow. But that's not even the SMG we're here to talk about. It's actually Teraba. Teraba is going to be affected by the general damage falloff change of just 1 meter, but that is it. It ain't getting its damage brought down like lightweight frame SMGs are, and it's not getting its zoom cut like precision frames are. Teraba is already a filthy weapon in PvP right now, capable of achieving an absurd time to kill when Ravenous Beast is activated. Not to mention, it's one of the only weapons maintaining the now uber rare SMG zoom factor of 16. I know, if you're a new D2 player, a lot of SMG users harp a lot on zoom, but it really is important on SMGs, and with Teraba being one of the only remaining 16 zoom options, its usage numbers are only going to go up. Seriously though, if you haven't put on Teraba in a hot minute, you are missing out. It is very good. Oh, and uh, don't tell Bungie, but remember how earlier they toned down Multimox zoom factor to 15 with the Model 8 scope because any higher than that was just ridiculous? Well, they didn't do the same thing to Escape Velocity, which along with Teraba is now one of the rare non-sunset SMGs capable of hitting 16 zoom. Did I mention that I have one sitting in my vault with high range and elemental capacitor? Yeah, but y'all take Datto's side when my vault is full at 600 capacity. Curious. Moving on, why don't we talk about a weapon that may have flown under the radar a little bit in the TWAB that is likely to get a tad more usage beginning tomorrow. Smite of Moraine. Let's whip out the TWAB and reread the section on adaptive pulse rifles, which at first glance look like they're barely getting touched at all. A crit multiplier buff going from 30.4 to 31.4. Literally one extra point of damage per bullet only on a headshot. Don't spend it all in one place, kid. Bungie points out that should allow a weapon to two-tap enemy guardians in PvP, but only if they're below tier 4 Resil. I'm pretty sure that when I read through that change and made a video on it last Thursday, I commented something along the lines of, yeah, who gives a sh**? Only serial killers and people who pour milk before their cereal are currently running below tier 4 Resil in PvP right now. More Resil equals more unflinching, and people are running high Resil a lot these days, especially if you play Titan, which is currently very good. However, I didn't think to crunch numbers on damage perks. And yeah, I know, at the high end, big beefy perks like Kill Clip are always very easily going to put you into two-tap territory on an adaptive frame, no problem. But what about smaller damage buffs? Coming in way at the bottom, even beneath level 1 Rampage, Adrenaline Junkie and Swashbuckler. Each of them have 5 overall tiers of damage. You can ramp all the way up to tier 5 with a grenade kill for Junkie or a melee kill for Swash, but weapon kills give you 1 tier of damage per kill. Tier 1 for either perk gives you a teeny tiny 6.6% damage buff, minimal AF. But let's do a little math. With the old PvP numbers, 2 headshot burst with an adaptive frame rifle comes out to a grand total of 182 
2.4. Now take that number and hit it with a 6.6% damage buff from either Swash or Adrenaline Junkie and you get 194 damage. Not terrible, but you would only be two tapping guardians with lower resil. Now let's take a look at the new numbers, what we'll be getting in game beginning tomorrow. Two headshot bursts with an adaptive frame will come to a new grand total of 188.4. Slap a 6.6% damage buff on that bad boy and you come up with 200.83. That should be enough damage to literally two tap any unshielded or unbuffed guardian in PvP, even if they have 10 resil. And while yeah, some adaptive frames are no stranger to the land of two tapping, see kill clip last perdition, Junkie and Swash are nice because they don't require reloading before getting that sweet extra damage. Yeah, Rampage behaves the same way and could always two burst at level one with all headshots shots even right now. However, Rampage has a maximum 3.5 second duration, kind of short, whereas Junkie and Swash have a default duration of 4.5 seconds. On top of that, if you have a crafted pulse rifle with either enhanced Junkie or enhanced Swash, that duration goes all the way up to five seconds. Five second window where you can two tap anyone in PvP regardless of Brazil. No reloading required. Quick side note, Dim actually says that Enhanced Swash has a 6.5 second duration. Was really excited about that until I looked into it. Definitely a mistake. Tried it in game and counted it frame by frame. It's five seconds. But back to what I was saying. Rampage also has zero effect on your weapon handling, whereas Adrenaline Junkie does. Not only do you get the extra damage output, but you also get around 20 extra handling after getting a kill. Weirdly enough, that handling part is only on Junkie and not on Swashbuckler, for some reason I'm not really too sure about. Maybe because melee kills happen more frequently than grenade kills? No idea. But with that in mind, if you've unlocked the crafting pattern for Smite of Moraine, I am hard recommending that you craft one with Enhanced Adrenaline Junkie for tomorrow. One weapon kill will officially give you a five second window where you can two tap anybody in PvP and get an extra 20 weapon handling for free. Now, I know. We already have two tap pulse rifles in PvP that need no ramp up period, including the almighty no time to explain. Yeah, no time is also getting a nerf, but it's a minor one. Do I think Smite will completely overshadow no time to explain beginning tomorrow? No, of course not. Do I still think that the new Smite of Moraine will be a much more lethal contender moving forward? Yeah, I do. Sleep on it at your own peril, but I will be crafting mine. Okay, final weapon to respect and or fear beginning tomorrow is going to be Drang. This literally goes double if you play only on console. In recording filler footage for today's video, I was shocked at how easy it was to rack up kills with my crafted Drang. Even though I hadn't really touched it in weeks, I want to say, I was routinely outgunning people on PC at mid-range who had hand cannons, SMGs, even shotguns. It's by no means an invincible primary, but Jesus God almighty, it's so easy to use well. Real quick, back to the TWAB. Like SMGs, sidearms are a particular weapon type that thrive off of good range and high zoom. Most sidearms that don't have good zoom are very dependent on having rangefinder. Bungie has now come to the realization that rangefinder is essentially too good of a perk in PvP and are removing the auto aim fall off bonus come tomorrow. However, with the rangefinder change, Bungie thought that sidearms were hurt particularly badly in new playtesting. To make up for that new shortcoming, sidearms are being given a 30% extra auto aim fall off distance. I would like to point out that the vast majority of sidearms across the board come standard with a zoom value of 12. If you add rangefinder on top of that, you can pretty much bump up that zoom value to 13, give or take. Drang has a default zoom value of, drum roll please, 14. Outside of exotics like Forerunner, Drang is far and away the strongest sidearm on paper right now. And this ain't a situation like SMGs, where one will rise higher in viability because others are getting mildly nerfed. Drang is already sick on controller and is literally getting a direct buff. Either Drang is getting stealth nerfed come tomorrow to compensate for this change, which honestly I wouldn't really be shocked by, or someone at Bungie may be playing a really risky game of chicken with how far they can push Drang. I would be amazed if we get all the way to 2023 through season 19 without Drang getting nerfed or reevaluated in some way 
after tomorrow. Again, I can really not describe how easy it was for me to get some of these clips that you're probably watching right now. All you have to do is craft a Drang with high range, slap a full auto weapon mod on it, and you're good to go. I'd recommend pairing it with Forerunner if you have one, by the way. That way you can pimp out your armor with mods that help support sidearm play and use that to benefit both of your equipped weapons at the same time. And FYI, Bungie has clarified that Forerunner will not be getting the 30% sidearm buff, but even without it, Forerunner is really sick. Come by my stream tomorrow, yes, I stream, and tell me what you think when we're able to get our hands on the new changes. Festival of the Lost should also be live by then, so I'll probably be fiddling around in there too. Subscribe to my channel if you're new and like today's video. Great way to support my channel for free. Thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you on stream.